One of the most impactful parts of that journey happened December 21st, or December 23rd, 2021. And it was just like any other day. I woke up in the morning, standing in the bathroom mirror, brushing my teeth. And I'm standing there brushing my teeth, and all of a sudden, I, I start to feel weird. All of a sudden, my heart starts beating very fast. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm breathing heavy. My vision gets a little blurry. And I'm overcome with this, just this fear of panic and, and dread. And in my mind, I'm thinking, shit, I'm having a heart attack. Like, this is it. I, was, I scream for my wife, Blake, get over here. Something's wrong. She has me lay down on the bed. And then my body just starts like convulsing. Like if you've ever had the flu when you get the shakes, that's what my body was going through. And I, I could not figure out what the hell was going on with me. Uh, to make matters worse, this was during the holidays. So my regular doctor was gone. I tried to go to urgent care. They told me that they were filled with COVID patients and they refused to see me. And uh, the following day, I asked my wife to drive me to the emergency room. And right before I checked myself into the emergency room, my wife talks me out of it. She's like, let's go home, relax, figure it out. Uh, you know, you seem okay. A couple days later, I was finally able to get an appointment to go see a doctor. And I go to the doctor, they do an EKG scan, they do their full analysis, and they say, you're fine. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you. So I look at the doctor and I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I, I literally felt like I was gonna die. And the doctor looks at me and she said, you know, you might want to go see a different kind of doctor. And I look at her, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Like a therapist? She's like, I'm not going to go see a therapist. Are you kidding me? So I'm sitting in my therapy session. <laughs> one of several that I uh, ended up doing, one of many, I should say. And I started talking to the therapist and it became very clear that one of the things that caused my panic attack was this book. Was the very fact that I was having to write about vulnerability when I am not a vulnerable person. I do not come from a vulnerable background. I do not come from a vulnerable family. My parents are from the Republic of Georgia, the former USSR, communist regime. Now, although my mom was more comfortable with emotion and with vulnerability as a young boy, I ultimately grew up watching my dad. And my dad never emulated any kind of weakness. His philosophy was never show emotion, don't show weakness, always try to be number one mentally and physically, and that's it. In fact, I actually remember one time, I must have been, I don't know, eight or nine years old. I was playing in a soccer tournament. And after the soccer tournament, uh, my dad and I, we go to the coach's house to pick something up and the coach says, oh, hang on a second, I got a trophy for you. And the coach goes and he brings out a trophy. And my dad looks at the trophy and he looks at me and the coach and he's like, what the hell is that for? They got last place. And the coach is like, oh, we're giving participation trophies so that the kids feel like they, you know, participated. And my dad looks at the coach and he's like, that's bullshit, keep the trophy, get in the car. <laughs> that's how I grew up, right? That's how I grew up. So when I was forced to confront this theme of vulnerability, my body, my mind was like, ah, oh, man, absolutely not. And so it caused this, this panic attack. And I won't ask you to raise your hands if you've ever had a panic attack or a heart attack, but if you have, you know it is a terrifying feeling. You actually feel like you're gonna die. And it's not a rational thing, right? It, it, it doesn't make sense. Your, your body is totally fine, but mentally that's, that's what you think is happening to you. And so this was a very profound moment and impact for me. And one of the things that I realized as I started to talk to a lot of CEOs and leaders is that leaders specifically struggle with vulnerability. This is a very challenging and a hard thing for a lot of leaders to embrace and to think about.